LCS opening day presented by MasterCard. First up, please join me in welcoming your spring 2023 LCS champs, Cloud9. On the other side of the rift, everybody counted them out at the start of the year, but they said F you to the doubters at every turn and made it to MSI. It's the Golden Guardian. The LCS 2023 Summer Split starts right now. Oh, forcing the flash out of him and S, but River flashes over the wall to keep him chased down. Licorice ready to fire the Ornhorn Horn oh. from downtown. Golden Guardians now get engaged on. Zven's taken low and Stick says already killed him. Fletch tries to find his way into the back while River takes out him and S on the oh. side. Licorice drops, and we got ourselves a 3v3. Oh, Sidestalker's going in, and that's what I was talking about. He always shows up. And he finds a triple kill. Team Liquid now swooping up with a slicing maelstrom. They'll kill two. And an insanity's about to make it three. Harry jumps forward with another spirit rush. And Turtle tries to call the feathers. But it's not happening. Can Boogie steal it away? He's charmed up. Baron's still at about 2K. Nice engage coming out from Summit. And insanity is down. The Baron is secured by TL. And Summit's ready to fight on back. Boogie drops two. TL just got all them kills. Plus a Baron. That's what I wanted to see. Fight here, guys. On Jax. Look, Harold. I'm on Jax first. I'm on Jax first. I'm on Rexai. Look at Rexai. Look at Rexai. Look at Rexai. Careful, Andy. Careful, Andy. Careful, Andy. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I speed daddy. Yeah. Take the Harold. Nice flash. Go, go, top, go, go, top, go top, go top, go top, go top. I'll cover mid with you. I'll cover mid with you. And Dignitas are trapped in their own fountain. Solo's not going to let him away as Rich has to drop the counter strike just to survive. Jensen continues falling back. 10 to 1, they get it done. Immortals. Someone's waving at you. No, I didn't. Contracts is waiting in the wings, has Keeper's verdict. The flash forward from Dokla. Call the Forge God, but our nice man flashes interrupt. over and nice interrupt from JoJo. The body slam denies the ultimate. Palafox to teleport oh. back, but the jungler's are already JoJo. dead. And JoJo is absolutely smurfing this fight in the river. Double kill for the mid later. Hi, JoJo. Already showing what he can do when he's at the top of his game. Oh, oh what a beautiful wombo! Explosive cast into the CC bounce house. That is the evil genius's composition. They are not okay. as bad as you. <laughs> oh, we still got more action on the bottom side of the map. Prince of Dice is the one! An impressive one from Puccio! Gives him the second win, and it's just a cat! Well, there's three people coming, and a Kasate in your face. No flash. The ultimate from Malkai locks him up. They root him down. No way he survives this right No way he survives this! Someday is able to live through all the damage. All the CC and FlyQuest are sent packing home. Good defense, better offense. <laughs> oh, welcome and to Open Man presented by MasterCard. Uh, we're having some fun here at the lounge. Welcome back, everyone. As you saw, that was day one of the LCS. Now it's uh, coming in for day two. How are you guys feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I actually thought there was a lot of fun stuff that happened in day one. The games were super lopsided for games three, four, five, but like lopsided in kind of an exciting way. We weren't expecting to see like really good games from EG and really good games from TL, 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves was C9? there's literally 3. There's literally 3. And Immortals. Oh, yes. Immortals. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Both revenge teams. And I was going to be concerned if TL just started the split good. No, we get to be a part of the journey with them, which I appreciate. Like early game stomping and then there was the rocky ride with TSM through Eight minutes, Rift Herald, we talked about it. <laughs> the first Rift Herald fight was tough, uh, but they started to clean it up. So I'm, I'm interested with them because they are still as good as they are in the early game and still need to work on. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get into the, some of the games and teams and all that stuff in a second. We actually want to start, though, with the patch, 13.11. Let's do it. Uh, this is going to be ending for live soon, but we're still going to be playing on it. Uh, these were the patch notes that came out. What stood out to all of you guys that you want to talk about? I want to talk about Ivern. We haven't seen him. You think we're good? But, but I think, so here's the thing. I think pro players don't want to play Ivern. Yeah. I also yeah. think it's a very unsexy champion to have like on broadcast. Yep. Like no one gets super hyped about Ivern, but he is really strong with these buffs and with the compositions we've seen coming out that are either double marksmen or just 
kind of protect the AD. It's still very bot lane focused, AD focused meta. I think Ivern can work in a lot of things that we've already been seeing. So I'm waiting for someone to pick it. Yeah, I mean, if anyone is going to pick it, it's going to be Santorin because he's played it before. He played it a ton in scrims back in 2020 when it was kind of meta. Daisy just mauls people now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And he actually is pretty good at the champion. So if the oper you're not going to blind pick Ivern, but if they end up holding jungle, I could actually see it literally in game one. Wouldn't be bad to see either for Dignitas to try and like throw a curveball. Like maybe. a Rexai. There it is. They tried no, the Rexai. Anyway. Rexai also got buffs. Uh, yeah. It didn't work out. No. Uh, for me, the item changes, I think, around the marksman role. The Kraken Slayer getting super buffed. The games were super stompy, so you didn't see yeah. any of these like late game Kraken Slayer melting tank opportunities because there were some like double tank frontline things. People were building Kraken Slayer, but all the games were like 10k gold leads and didn't feel like it mattered. Yeah. But it is like interesting itemization choices, I think, coming in that position right now. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot of different itemization, especially with Kraken Slayer getting a buff. Mm -hmm. So that's nice to see. Uh, support itemization for me hits it, like Echoes of Helia being the new support item that's come through. The Soul Siphon passage, uh, passive, I think, is something that people can get surprised about because you don't necessarily track the stacking of support like m those type of support champions and right now we're seeing a lot of yumi <laughs> we're, see we're seeing a lot of melio and just in general enchanter supports including lulu in the lpl which is a, a, a support that's being played a lot there shirelius though baby who cares about echoes after the nerf man give me give me i'm give just me saying Shirelius. it was looking good but yeah shirelius has always been an option but it's just nice to see i want to also see more static shiv cheese. There it is. Let's go. Is that it? I've seen static shiv Zoe. I, you know, our producer was showing me static shiv LeBlanc mm -hmm. earlier today. Yep. Static shiv Twisted Fate. There it is. You build a second item, you clear waves. You're playing too much ARAM, man. You're Oppen, like <laughs> from TL Academy did static shiv Twisted Fate twice, and he's like 22 and 2 kills deaths on it. I saw static shiv oh. GP as well. Yep. Uh, people were talking about that. Really? Yeah, so yeah, just do it. It's a cheese thing. Just build static shift. Yeah. I want to see it. It's just wave clear, man. Yeah. I, I am all for cheese builds. Uh, speaking of cheese, it's not really cheese anymore. It would have been yeah, back no. in the day. But Emily, uh, what do you bring for us to talk about today? Yeah, so uh, yesterday we saw that Nico was permabanned on red side. This is a clip that I'll talk <laughs> over. It's essentially Yagao, if you haven't seen this. This was still on 1310. On 1311, Nico has such a high presence. She's almost always banned on red side. Yesterday, she got through in one LPL game uh, and a team that should not have won against JDG actually ended up winning that game. So it's not just cheese. She's incredibly strong. They were joking at this point that Yagao just takes his hand off the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you see it. It's coming. Here's the payoff. Uh, but yeah, Nico is broken. <laughs> so if you were wondering why she has oh this insane uh, like ban rate, especially on red side, uh, because you do not want to give that up to your opponents. And I'm not sure why you'd ban it on blue side, like just pick it, um, is really insane. And it's because she can do stuff like this. I have loved Nico's rework. If people like stopped watching during like MSI ends and then you just pick up now for LCS, you're like, what the hell is this champion doing? Like you can hide as yeah. like yeah. basically anything on the map. You have a knock-up now in your alt. Like, she feels so disgusting. The best thing, too, is, like, hearing it sometimes in comms. Like, I know for a few released LPL comms, when she was still making it through a lot more games, like, people are just like, count your minions, count your minions, and then they still get trolled mm. by the Nikos disguising themselves as minions. So it's... It, you can do a lot with her, and there's definitely a reason why she's had such a high ban presence. Yeah, and, and players, even though it's, like, an obvious thing, you just have to train yourself to constantly press tab to see if she's out of vision or not. If you press tab, it's like, oh, there's no question mark on her, but I don't see her on the mini-map. She is, she is there. <laughs> I just don't know if she's a minion As or what? not. <laughs> so that's one thing. Uh, but yeah, also she got like a pretty absurd AP ratio change on her ulti from 100% to 120%. So like there is- One shots you. Yeah. <laughs> so the team fighting is easy. The laning phase is also easy to also just wave clear. So there's the simplicity of it. And then there's the complexity of just dealing with her uh, as she's like, as you can tell from your gal, it, turning into something. Just different. build Night Harvester on everything. The little green orb for the proc of Night Harvester stays. Unless they patch that out, but it, it used to be there. There's your pro tip. Just build Night Harvester <laughs> on everything to find the Nico. It's easy mode. Uh, the other thing to talk about is Emilio, a new champion that came out. You, you Chad is brain broken? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think, like, <laughs> what would you build? I, I have this really, someone was telling me about the on-hit Nico that I want to just, like, feed with, where you just 
be a candy mini and you try and hit fights. <laughs> like, it's you, not going to be good. You hope a fight breaks out near a candy minion that you can disguise as. Yeah, or yeah. just a double candy minion. Like, if it's going to work, it's only going to work in the lower brackets. <laughs> Charitable <laughs> term there. The lower brackets. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to talk about was Melio came out. We saw a lot of Melio getting through uh, the ban phase. A lot of Zeri bans, but the, or excuse me, Yumi bans, but then a lot more Melio. And double it looked incredible paired up with it. Yeah, I mean, here you kind of see uh, why you would take the summon Aerie into the Yumi because it's just going to kind of continuously proc. I think a lot of the damage that caused Prince to flash there was actually just from, from Aerie procs. Um, yeah. Or you can go Guardian. Uh, Melio is insanely strong. His kit has heals, what? Heals, shields, CC. And range. And range. Yeah. And, yeah. Also, and, a, and a cleanse. And a cleanse. Yep. For your whole team. That yep. cleanse. So that's beautiful. That's nice to see. But yeah, uh, a lot of the times you'd expect him to be weak in lane, which is the case, but we're seeing him being picked into Yumi a lot. So the area is yep. being uh, chosen, and so he's turning into a bully, uh, as you can see from the Lucian uh, clip. So I was wondering for a while why we were seeing some Lucian bans, but I was like, oh, yeah. Lucian Melio, even though we haven't seen it as much because they've been banned or taken away a lot with uh, Lucian Nami games, that is a terrifying duo. All right, moving ahead to look at some of the teams, like we promised, we're going to do yeah. a segment that we kind of did yesterday called Heat Checks, running yeah. with LCS Fresh. It's actually not hot in LA these days. It's like cloudy because global warming or something. I don't really know what's going on. It's but like we're still going to run I with think a it's bit. Like El Nino or something. Is it? I don't know anything. I hear it's going to be actually El Nino. I don't know. It's going to be really El hot. Nino for everything. I know. Joke. Yeah, it's going to be really hot in like two months. All right. Well, we're not there yet, but we're still going to do heat check. So we're yeah. going to go through a couple of the matchups and say how good we're feeling about them. Jet, you're up first. Okay. Get in there. Oh, doing? the metrics are different. TSM and FlyQuest. So Ooh. I will say, I'm going to come at this differently than a lot of you will. Okay. How do you know? So yeah, TSM is going to Well, work. I'm going to... Uh, things are going to make so much sense once I'm done that maybe you'll just all copy me. Uh, so, I will say, FlyQuest really sucked yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Almost perfect game. Yes. But a lot of people had them, like, you pro their, their, their temperature probably started, like, here. So this would have been, like, pre-game one. Okay? This would have been pre-game one FlyQuest. Yeah, I agree with that. I'll actually go pretty far. Uh, right? I go all the way up. I would go say to world, go yeah. Worlds, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I guess go worlds is like top three or four. So that would have been like yesterday. Yes. Right? right? So I think a lot of people would say, like, damn, they almost got perfect gamed. They need to go hospital. That's the wrong color. Uh, they need to go hospital. But I would also say, like, <sighs> this looks to me like the old Mercury thermometer. Yeah. Which yeah. takes time to adjust. So right now, the rest so of the actual liquid if, needs to heat. And yeah, cool. even if it was a really hot thermometer, it was literally one game. So it's probably like right here. Okay. That's so going to be my they're going to world. check. I mean, honestly, yes. So yeah, I mean, it's literally yeah. one game. This is one day of overreactions. You're saying yeah. that that's don't don't I lose faith. Yeah, that. this is how the thermometer has moved. So we're going to move to TSM now. There it is. Yeah. I would say this is probably how they started. <laughs> it's still about So this there. is like their day one heat check. Yeah. So they're checking out of the hospital. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep them right there. All right. Well, you thought about it. Still, time in the room. Yeah. That, in was the about, that was about the temperature check yesterday. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes no sense. Disagreements. No, no disagreements. No, I, I think I, you're right. I don't disagree. I mean, I'm really good at this game. FlyQuest, right. still go Worlds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what it looks like for the, the current heat check. Yes. Yeah. All right, yeah. Emily, All right. I am, I am going to copy you in terms of, like, what it was going in, right? Okay. okay. So, also, shout out to our producers who color matched. The colors are yeah, I did not, really good. We didn't do any of that. And yeah. they're labeled and so stuff? So, I feel like at the beginning of yesterday, right? Thank you, Big G. It was probably... Wait, why is this not... There we go. You know what? I like this better. I always get lie. trolled with my outfits. Oh, it's oh, actually in a really good spot now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it. actually, this it's is red. It's red. It's red. It's red. It's red. You got to change it. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Wow. There, there we, we go. go. I know how to use Telestrator. Anyway, it was at Go Hospital yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. Which is still not as low as it can go. Yeah, so you could be, you could be sub, sub yeah. hospital. Yeah, something like that. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So more. But the, I think right now, like maybe optimistically, people might be here. I, I, I need to see them play more games. Yeah. But I would say I am 
I am more optimistic on them than I was previously. Like, put them right there. Okay. Yeah. We're so agreeable. To NRG. Them. I won't be good. <laughs> I, I feel like people, middle of the pack is kind of high, honestly, compared, or maybe that's just an optical illusion. I feel like people probably put a, would have put them middle of the pack or like here at the start of yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that shit was not good though. Were yeah, they the perfect? There? So who got perfect game? It was NRG, right? Or yeah, yeah. it yeah. was NRG. Yeah. There was a bunch of potential perfect games that were off by like one kill, one turret, one rift herald. Yeah, NRG actually got perfect, the perfect game, game by EG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fourth one so, in the franchise era. Yeah. So yeah, now okay. I would put them like. I mean, I still think they're gonna end up middle of the pack. Maybe like move it one down, but like I feel like this is still a pretty. Obviously, they got perfect game by EG. Yeah. It's one game, I, I would keep them there. Here, I'll put IMT back up to, what to was it? We're, we're kind of in between, like, Go Hospital and there. This so is a there. close game. So, yeah. Th this is going to be, I had a hard time being like, who is actually going to win this game based on day one performance. All right, not bad. Who's up next? All right, that's on me. What do you got for us? Which teams? Golden Guardians and Evil Geniuses. So, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll clear this one up just to see what we end up getting here. Bam. Oh, that was clean. Okay, so Evil Geniuses, we did Golden Guardians, and the, I guess the question is, did I change my take? Did Jat change my mind? Wow. Yeah, just be dig. Did did just be dig. Yeah, did color. A That's a little color? insulting, I will say. So, know. is it the same color? I think so. It's gonna be a little too yellow. Raz, okay. just match your colors it's, next time. But to match <laughs> yeah, my right. colors, do your, do your, yeah. what am I supposed to do? Okay, I, I am not changing my take. They're going to Worlds. I think. Whoa! Wait. What? <laughs> Oh no, I actually had them fourth. Who'd you have <laughs> over them? 100 Well, then, then they can. No, no, I had them going to Worlds. I had them third. I had them third. It, it was a tough one. I remember that I had that conversation, but I had them going to Worlds. I am not going to overreact. They faced Cloud9. It was a tough one. They had an early game lead. They stay where they're at here going to Worlds. And yes, due to the Mercury on a typical thermometer, yeah. that's going to take a while for So you'd say, adjust. like, losing in 26 minutes is like, yeah, that's still the hottest temperature on the thermometer. <laughs> Yes. Is that your analysis? I'm not changing based on well, one game. game. Yes, it's it's also one game. It's one game. It's C9 who they routinely lost to. Like, it's also almost every yes. match. Yes. Depends on how you make the thermometer. Because it could be hotter, but the thermometer is all the way fulled up. But like, if you start heating it more, it'll just turn to a gas. Like Maybe Cloud9 is actually gaseous and not liquid anymore. Because there's been enough heat. I just disagree wow. that it's the They're hottest fast. possible they temperature after a loss. I think so. I think so. I don't. You're overreacting. You overreacted on the last one, you're overreacting on this one. And you're a known Golden Guardians hater. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> you know. You're saying they're the best. <laughs> they're not the best, they're going to Worlds. Anyways, what let's go on to the next one. Like? We're going to the next one, Move Evil on. Geniuses. I actually would have had Evil Geniuses initially here. Around okay. Go Hospital to the middle of the pack. Uh, they perfect gamed. I, that's different yeah. now. And they have great players. Bot lane was incredibly strong. We saw the solo kill uh, that happened there um, because of Unforgiven. And then the top side of the map was great. So, and JoJo performed. If JoJo performs this way. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. They're almost going to Worlds. They're almost, they, they might they're almost to Worlds. there. It's going to be a heartbreak. They're going to have to play Europe in the fourth seed. <laughs> I, mean, I like the sound of that. Right? JoJo's good in those matches. Yeah. I like the sound of that. He has a great history versus Mad Lions. Successful. Yes, he does. All right. Successful. So that is my take on that one. All, All right. right. I'm coming up last. I got 100 Thieves versus TL. All right, okay. catch. I, like I need to lean. I'm not in the way, right? Nice. I don't know. They do camera magic. Okay, cool. All right. 100 Thieves. People think I hate them. Do you? Do you? No. I'm a believer now. Whoa. They're going. They're going to Worlds. What? Am I overreacting? So Who can hold say? on. One game You're of data. I follow the data. Wait, There's one it, game of data. They were amazing. Six? That's like 130 degrees. Yeah. Like I said, phase changing. They're turning gaseous. It's starting to like, maybe the thermometer is going to explode. They looked great. FlyQuest was, everyone's like second seed, third seed. They destroyed them. And they what did if, it with Nuke Duck mid. He played great against FlyQuest. He was supposed to be our world's bound team. They had their whole lineup there. They what if Quid them. comes in and messes everything up? Oh no. That'll then be a new data point and maybe it'll cool down. Inexperience. Jet, I stuck the thermometer in game one and it came out scalding hot. What do you want me to say? It's a one game sample size. All right, okay, you commit. Okay. I agree. Thank you. Team Liquid. Uh-oh. Oh, that's still pretty high. Oh, oh no, my God. I'm controlling actually, let's go back down. Oh! Nope. Oh, dude, oh my God, he's messing up. I fell for it. Yeah, they're still here for me. I think like it was really cool to see them win that game, but you saw a lot of the exact same problems you saw last split, which got them yeah. eighth. And even if they do slightly better, that's still middle of the pack. Like, even if they should be here, we're talking like, all right, maybe you're more fifth. 
it was really scary to see against TSM. They get these huge leads and they're still losing dragon fights. They're still not setting up around objectives correctly. Like it is, seems like the same team that we saw in spring. Doesn't seem like very much has changed. That's where I'm at with these yeah. teams. Well, that's pretty doomer of you. Okay. What? Yeah. One game sample size. Yeah. You guys keep trying to like say how the thermometer's changing and like your your liquids are all like take forever to heat up. Hey. My, mine, I stick it yeah. in, it comes out. Well, you have one of those new thermometers that you pop in your for like two seconds, pops out temperature. It's like, yeah, you got the you got the turkey in the oven. Yeah. You stick I it got it, it, I have an old thermometer. It takes like two minutes. I don't think they were. I, when have you guys yeah, last used did, a mercury thermometer? It's actually, not that slow. I have no oh, they idea are slow. Are you talking about the electronic ones that you stuck under your tongue? No, no. it's a mercury. It, it doesn't use electricity. Okay, I was just making sure because I'm pretty sure the mercury thermometers are relatively fast. No. It's got to be like two minutes. I, someone's going to correct us on this. Yeah. <laughs> Someone tweet at one of us. How long can we just have this? Link, link a YouTube video about <laughs> mercury thermometer. Oh, God. All right. Uh, well, we're going to take a look at some more teams coming up in the first, but we're not. Oh. Three to four minutes. What? Three to that, four minutes. That's what our producer is our saying. Producer I said this is not super appropriate. That yeah, does seem very slow. Yeah, I yeah. think it was three to four minutes if you put it like under your under your armpit or like in in the nose. There's another spot you could put it that's much faster. It, he, that's said, he, said, he said mouth though was three to four. That's close, true. Your, close your mouth three to four Sorry, minutes. I'm We're fine. not doing butt. We're doing <laughs> yeah. your mouth. All right, okay, yeah, get yeah. your mind out of the gun. We're yeah. done. We're done. We're done. Yeah. The doctor wanted it faster though. <laughs> the doctor's got a lot of clients to get there. There's ten teams. He's checking fast. <laughs> All right, we gotta get out of here before we say something unhinged, more, more unhinged than we already have. We're not the only ones conducting heat checks. Here's a look at Jensen answering some spicy questions. You played on a decent amount of teams, right? Throughout your time, you got a lot of experience with a lot of players throughout the years. And a big part of that is scrimming. Some of the scrims are good, scrims are bad. Who would you say is the number one griefer in scrims, either on your team now or throughout the people you played? Okay, number one griefer. Yeah. I think. I think this is an easy one, actually. Really? Yeah. I think, um, I think Rush takes this one. <laughs> okay. Why was Rush such a griefer then? Um, I feel like at a certain point, he just didn't want to be in NA anymore. So he was kind of just like, he was kind of just there, mm -hmm. going through the motion. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was, it was not, the, not the best. Asserting Dominus, I know that he doesn't die, but I did it for fun. But honestly, it's a tough one because I feel like at certain points I can compete for the title myself too. So <laughs> I think I think me and Rush would both take the crown together actually. Yeah, I respect yeah. it. Dual yeah. citizens in the exactly. area of grief. Exactly, yeah. I love that for you. Well, thank you very much, Dignitas, for sharing that one with us. Here are the games for the there's, rest of the week. There's got to be more to that video, right? Yeah, yeah I imagine there's a yeah. longer cut okay. of that on their YouTube. Yeah, okay, good. Twitter. Check that out. I like how Jensen acknowledged his own contributions to the award as well. Yeah. It's very honest of him. I think we've all uh, we've all griefed at different points <laughs> in time. If you're trying to say you haven't, yeah. that can't be right. Yeah. I I love the honesty there. Good on Ravish <laughs> get to get those, questions, those answers out of him. <laughs> So here are the games today. Like we were saying, Dignitas C9 kicking us off. FlyQuest vs. TSM. Both of them want to bounce back from day one. 100 vs. TL. Undefeated currently. One of them has to lose there. We got Energy vs. IMT. Golden Guardians vs. EG to end the day. What are you most excited about? I'm looking forward to games three to five. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just yeah. because I think I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to clean up in predictions. We're, we're not there yet. Oh, yesterday, no, this guy. Yesterday, I did clean up in predictions. This guy. I, always I was not cleaning up. You got 4-1. Yeah. yeah, 4 out of 5. Raz, what did you get? Let's not talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Half that. as many Ws. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I think it's going to be a good day. All to right. be specific, I'm going for Golden Guardians EG. All right. I think EG uh, surprised us yesterday, and they could surprise us again. So I'm looking forward to that matchup. Definitely a good one to see. We're going to start with game one, though, and just talk about Cloud9 how good they looked in their first game back, beating Golden Guardians for what, like the ninth time in a month and a half, going back to the finals, then at MSI, and then again on opening day. We need to track this for it's sure. It's been a while. <laughs> we need to track it's this. It's a lot of wins. How'd you guys feel watching them? I actually felt like, I, I, I got the chance to cast this game. I felt like they had a very slow start. I thought m &S had a pretty poor game. I heard he was a little bit tilted afterwards, but they need to be able to bounce back in a big way because I think uh, their comp turned on for sure in the fights that we're seeing right here where they can just kind of fly in 
with Zary Kindred. Blabber talked about how OP Kindred was. He was farming well. But, like, there was a lot of moments early on in this game that were a little dicey for them and I think could have led to a much harder game. Yeah, I really love this composition. I I liked their composition actually a lot better than Golden Guardians because for the flip side, I thought it came to a point where Golden Guardians' lead just wasn't going to be enough regardless yeah. against what C9 did. And I really liked the double marksman. I loved seeing Blabber on Kindred. I thought it was super fun. Yeah. Um, and this is the kind of thing that this team can do, right? Like, they're very flexible. Um, I do agree, but I also think that the slow start, uh, individual performances aside, could also, again, be more comp-based as well when mm. these two team compositions meet each other because we've also seen from C9 them go for super heavy early game. Um, and of all teams, I think they are the best in snowballing that as well. Yeah, there are elements of that uh, within the game, like uh, with bot lane falling behind, the early invade from Drax, of course, getting level two over Kindred. There are things like that in which is like, okay, compositionally, that was the reason for that. Um, there were some just flat out errors with uh, Kindred going over wall, trying to get a kill on who he and then getting like picked mm -hmm. off. So they made mistakes and I think people need to recognize that, but they find windows to just open the game up. And that one is for me like quintessential C9. Like the second dragon that they, oh, the first dragon they picked up, which was, oh, bot lane's behind. They lost the wave off the base, but that means that when they come back to lane, they get the push. Kindred immediately um, says, okay, let's just start Dragon, because that's our opportunity. We can get something out of it. And so Cloud9 is a team that's actively thinking, actively challenging you, even when they're behind, and that's something... Those are like moments within the game where you're like, okay, I appreciate that, because there's not a lot of teams that can challenge them to get them to fall behind early, compositionally or off their own mistakes. So that's a positive of Cloud9 that I like seeing. Yeah, I think Jet's a nitpicker. I think that was a, a good game out of C9. Golden Guardians had good games against them in the early game a lot of the times in their yeah. matchups. Like, the Golden Guardians is a good early game team. So I have no problem with them. We'll see now, looking at predictions, if people think Golden uh, Dignitas excuse me, has any other chance against uh, C9. Did anyone? Another Golden team. 99. 99! Who's the one? Who's the one? Who's the one? That's really high. <laughs> this is only day two, technically, that we've had the wow. percentage fan vote on That's screen. That's a record. Oh. It is a record. Out of two days in 10 games so far, that is the most certain fans have ever been. I don't think we're ever going to see 100. We're never going to see 100. I think we might see 100 later on this There's season. always that one guy in the chat or who is ever voting. You're just looking at them. It's like, are you really yeah. doing this? Wow. I what? thought I was going to be so hipster with my game's four and five predictions, but I'm just following the pack. Yeah, I you are. Every, the interesting thing to me is every single one of us in these final three matches picked one that the other three didn't, right? Nice. So, like, you picked TL over yeah. 100. Um, I picked uh, EG over GG. And then Raz picked IMT over NRG. Yeah, I, I like the fact that you guys still have an NRG after yesterday's games, but I really think IMT... This looks like a different team. And the one thing that I was surprised about was Balulu playing well on the RA pick, like playing really well. I was like, okay, yeah. that for me, my biggest question is like, how can he do on the meta champions? And I thought he did really well. So uh, they're just a different looking team right now. All right. I want to see Santorum play Ivern. I want to pull this back. I want to see go. him play Ivern. He's good at it. All right. It's good. Jat's calling this pick. He thinks Santorin, if they want to be Cloud9, if they want that 1%, That's their lies yep. with Ivern, the brush. Mm -hmm. The great brush flex maker, pick. Brush master. Support, jungle, no, mid. No, just, just flex pick. Jungle. Stop that. Off We're going to go to the casters before Raz gets more on hinge. Let's head over for game one. 80 carry. <laughs> <laughs>
Opening week presented by MasterCard. We're here for day two of Summer Split in LCS. It's 2023. It's Cloud9 going up against Dignitas. Ooh. And if the fans have anything to say about it, if their opinion <laughs> That's crazy, is to be by regarded, the way. it's 99 to 1 odds. That's actually crazy that there was only a couple of trolls there. Uh, to be able to vote the other way. <laughs> you see, and you even just subconsciously there. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple oh, of that trolls. Was, that Those was not guys. subconscious. That, oh, that, that was, was deliberate. <laughs> that was very deliberate. Our producer, though, five seconds before we just came on air, producer just decided, Dignitas, they're going to shock the world right now. Here, today, me, you, Flowers, we're going to be here for it. Dignitas, they're going to shock the world. Was Zeus the one fan? Zeus was the one. He, was the fa he has the faith. Well, let's see if Dignitas can pull off the incredible upset and take down C9, jumping into picks and bands. Yes! Woo! Yes! That's my line! Wait, can that's, we, can what we, I, that's what I put in my custom in-house games! Can we also add the Cassante on there? Yeah! Let's put uh, that I'll, in there, too! Yeah, nice! All right! All right! All, right. all of them! Get well, them all hey, out of here! We're two-thirds of the way there. There's no Zeri, there's no Yumi. Melio and Jace also being banned out here in this one. So those two primary supports, those very strong enchanters, along with that premier AD carry. Then the Jace banned <laughs> out. We got the Blabber fans here yeah. as well. That's one thing. The analyst desk was discussing the buffs to Ivern. Uh, and Ivern's solo queue win rate did skyrocket. However, Ivern very prone to getting invaded on his first clear. In pro play, that is a giant liability. Yeah. And against Blabber, if you're going to pull it out <laughs> in pro play, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm actually here for it. I I'm down to see some Ivern in a very good spot, as they were saying, uh, Daisy super buff. But do not do that versus Blabber. If you pull out an Ivern now, it better be a solo lane. Well, one of those <laughs> staple junglers that often gets played, the Vi, banned out by Dig, and one of the new age terrors of the Rift, Nico, banned out last band of the first phase by C9, uh, uh, locking in the Cassante. Kobe, I'm I sorry. I just added that one. They're, they didn't not, get the... they're not listening to no? rules. They're okay. breaking the rules. Right. Rule breakers on the side of Dignitas. Cassante locked in first. Surprise, surprise. Cassante, the flex here, very, very powerful for Dignitas. You know, there was actually a decent amount of hype for Dignitas coming into this split. Mm -hmm. bringing in Rich, trading out for, for Ama, and just with the success that they started to, uh, you know, have at the end of the split when they added Tomo, they started looking better. Um, but obviously, opening game, really rough for them. Well, I'd also argue, in a lot of situations, Cassante does seem like a flex. I would say on this Dignitas team, there's not much of a chance of it. You Remember don't see that? Jensen? Remember back during the Ruination <laughs> season when Viego's solo lane was just overpowered as all hell and everybody had to play it and Jensen uh, just could not make it click? I feel like Jensen's much more about traditional picks in the uh, mid lane. He's and a traditional like man, yes, yes. I don't think it's going to happen, man. The traditional Jensen, traditional mid laner. Let's see what he's going to play into the Annie if he will decide. Uh, to take that Cassante away. The Maokai, all right. That is a very solid front line, very solid team fight being set up here for Dignitas. Even though I do think that Jinx, if we're if you're transporting from MSI meta, mm -hmm. Jinx got hit much harder than Aphelios got hit. Yeah. And so many more teams now on current batch are, are do prefer the Aphelios. Uh, I'm definitely included in that. We'll see how it goes here because Cloud9 also have the Lulu here with and with Yumi and Milio both banned. That is that is so much scaling enchanter uh, extra DPS for you. So going by expectation with where the roles would end up, Cassante top, Maokai jungle, Lulu support, and then Annie mid, we actually only have 80 carries matching roles in the first half of the draft. So these second phase bans are not going to be as focused towards the smaller role pool that they normally are. Yeah, and whenever you do pick that you know one of these enchanters that's vulnerable to lane kills. Usually we'll see the Blitzcrank ban, Cloud9 protecting against that, uh, protecting Zven. They've joked about it for a long time, but the, any Enchanter meta is a Zven meta. Uh, yep. <laughs> as, ever since he switched over to the support role uh, and doesn't want to have to deal with dodging Blitzcrank hooks. There's just too much playmaking potential there, too much setup possibilities. Dude, I had a, a promo shoot one time for some content with Sven, and I called him my favorite Yumi, and he just looked at me like I had <laughs> personally offended him. So it's he's known for those enchanters, though, and they're going to ban out a second engaged champion with the Nautilus alongside the Blitzcrank. Dignitas targeting that jungle pool twice already, once with the Vi in the first half, now with the Wukong here in the second. Do they want to aim at another jungler, or are they happy with the remaining matchups? The last ban will be the Kindred. I like this going up against Blabber. Trinity Force Kindred is a menace 
this, and Blabber's exactly the type of guy to play it. Yeah, Cloud9 are the team to do it to with so many lanes that they can set up to be early pushers to allow Blabber to really go for a lot of invades, be super aggressive with that champion. So they ban out one of them. The tough thing with Blabber is though, he has an insanely deep champion pool. Yeah. This man grinds constantly. Um, this is not going to be anything new. The Kha'Zix here is is brought back. There's some more options now on, on uh, Kha'Zix um, with the with the Ghost Blade, with the Dust Blade. So we'll see which variation he goes for. You you can still go for the, the Conqueror style. I very much yeah. doubt that we'll see the Conqueror style here, even though Ding Toss are showing double front line. Well, I'm going to go ahead and flaunt that. I got the prediction correct. It was not a mid lane Cassante. Jensen does want something more traditional. He will lock the Ari in against the Annie. And the final pick of the draft here for Dignitas, a little bit of protection in the bottom lane, along with some of that potential for the pick or the engage in the Thresh. Whenever I see Jinx, I want to see some kind of support that can provide some layer of peel, some measure of protection, and hey, that's what Thresh is going to accomplish. Yeah, Lantern's great for anyone who's isolated and is going to fall prey to that Kha'Zix. Um, get you right next, cozy next to the Thresh, so you're not isolated anymore, and that's primarily going to be Tomo. Meanwhile, since you get last pick, final pick here for top lane, Fudge goes with the Jax into the Cassante. All right, let's do it, Fudge. Constantly one of the guys who likes to show us some more impressive play up there in the top half of the map. The guys come in and become one of the premier top laners in the region, so I always like to see him more on these carry and, and one of the things I was talking about earlier, when Dig actually, they, they first signed Rich, I was hearing really positive things about him in isolated 1v1s uh, and bullying people in scrims and, and having a lot of success there in scrims, at least at the very beginning. So we'll see how the early stages uh, at least for the, the 1v1 start, but Ding Toss definitely looking towards team fights, yeah. obviously, with this uh, composition that they have here. Where do you want to see junglers go early on in this one? Specifically for Santorin, because after Dignitas's rough game yesterday, I really think they need to get some momentum nice and early if they want to have any sort of a chance here against C9. So I think that your Maokai job is to sapling up around mid lane here and actually just okay. try and try and get vision uh, and and keep track of the Kha'Zix. You can definitely go for Flash W into Charm plays towards mid lane as well. Uh, if you have your your vision and your tracking of enemy jungler in place, then that's a, a very reliable early combination you can go for even before the level six, which I think is better before the Annie gets the Tibbers. Yeah. So that could be a point where you can try and go for it. Um, but you do have to be very, very cautious here because if you give early kills over to the Kha'Zix, then the early lethality starts to come out and the snowball starts to come through and yeah, I definitely don't think he's going to go like the Gore Drinker Conqueror version of it. First strike. Okay, yep. So he's going to go with the lethality build. Well, let's do it. Dignitas versus C9. Game one, day two, MasterCard opening week here in summer 2023. As Dignitas, let's see what we got here. Anything out of the ordinary? Cleanse on the Jinx, Ignite on Thresh. Other side, same thing. Cleanse there for the Aphelios, but the difference is the heal on the Lulu, taking a more defensive approach to things. All of our solo laners have their teleports, of course. Remember that on the new patch, the new era of mid-season update League of Legends, we do have those teleports getting unleashed much more quickly. 10 minutes instead of 14 means oftentimes we're going to have second dragon fights or similar objective scuffles getting top laners involved more quickly. I propose that we make it even more quick and we keep the timer running right now. So it's 10 minutes from when the game starts. <laughs> Pauses don't detract from that time. So even though game time's not moving forward, the 10 minute Unleashed teleport time. You know what you're is. doing? You're going to create a real life meta game where at the beginning of every game, some top laner just <laughs> throws some crap on their keyboard and says, Oh, we got to pause for 10 minutes. Sorry, guys. And then every Yay, time. Yeah, we got old teleport back. Yeah, then it's we just old it. teleport now. That's what we're doing. <laughs> You got to be careful about that, man. These are professional video game players. They're going to min-max. Yeah, careful. Those top laners, they they want to get involved in the game. <laughs> yeah, they're tired of this island. They want to be rescued. <laughs> this is some... Wait, what's that movie? It's not... What's that? Castaway, starring Tom Hanks yeah. in volleyball. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was trying to remember the name. All I know are memes from it. That I didn't actually see the movie. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the next best thing. So it rounds uh -huh. up, right? Like it's, exactly. It's, it's, it's 2023. The, I'm not missing the, anything. The memes tell the story themselves. But yeah, we have some kind of a settings issue. I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, any ideas? Do you want to just guess at it? We don't really have any game to talk about right now, so...
Uh, I, I'm going to go with uh, they're ready because I see them in chat already typing out the R's. So whatever setting issue it was, it was quickly it resolved. It was fixed? Okay, good. Maybe it was just the graphics thing or maybe it was in like some screwed up resolution. You know, my most controversial setting that I use What's is that? I max the minimap size. Oh, I, yeah. I may, it, it, cover, it covers the grandpa size. Yeah, I, I max it all the way as big as I could make it so that I have perfect map awareness. And it's funny looking, but it actually worked. It helped. Wait, what if the devs added an option that you could like click a button and it would make the mini map just be your second monitor instead? Would you use that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bigger is better, Flowers. I'm down. All right. Well, Even bigger. Hey, Merka. If you're out there listening and you don't have anything better to do, which I highly doubt, how about a full screen second monitor mini map? And we can call it the Mega Map. And we can like partner with one of those widescreen curved uh, manufacturers so that we can yeah. even get it on one of those. <laughs> Man, Get it circling around behind you. This is sounding like an incredible business opportunity already, but down here in bottom lane, things are as they usually are at level one with these Jinx versus Aphelios lanes. A couple auto attacks traded back and forth, and that's about it. You can see potions being chugged by pretty much everybody. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I saw a melee drops uh, as you were thing. talking. I was, wasn't going to say anything, but you know, it's, it's looking a little rough down there. <laughs> it's going to be uh, <laughs> opposite side clears for, for junglers too, though. Uh, and I like this here. Santorin just going to do Maokai top towards bottom uh, since he's got the Cassante. Cassante is always fine getting pushed in mm -hmm. uh, because you actually do uh, have a pretty easy time keeping up your CS there, even under uh, a decent amount of pressure. Plus, when you're towards your uh, tower, you can often threaten setups with your Q3s. People have to be a little bit worried about you flashing on them, getting that knock in if, if your jungler is around too. Even pre six, but mostly post six. And I feel like I have seen that play more out of fudge than anybody else, specifically in LCS. Mm. So I would hope he's not that gonna get as by someone that. who's done it a lot, that he's aware of what Rich would be able to do with that. Jumps in for the counter strike there, but he's not gonna land the helicopter attack. Rich can just step oh. back. Oh, cannon in the dirt, my friend. Unlucky. Six and zero on Jack's career has never lost while playing Jax. Well, it's looking pretty good to me right now for him. Yeah, he, he forced Rich to, to miss that cannon minion, even though he does get hit by a Q3 here. He got the minion wave in. He cancels his early recall, though, just goes for the ward drop and has Blabber on top side just to make sure Blabber will be able to get his coveted scuttle crab. Very important. They should be traded. Bottom side for Ding Toss is helping. Santorin get their bottom one, and Fudge goes to push in the remnants of this wave with a little bit of mana he has left. Yeah, he's almost entirely Oom, um, but so is Rich, so he's not terribly worried about it. Obviously, Cassante does have the ability to cast spells from very low mana with the Antofo strike, only taking 15, but not enough to really threaten a Jax. As you can see, Santorin here in the bottom lane, hanging around, just clearing Krogs. It's not like there's much of an opportunity for him to gank Berserker or Sven right now. He will throw one of the saplings into the tri brush as he makes his way forward here. Now, if the Zerker and Sven step up, maybe there's a chance. Or maybe he just hangs out in the brushes. Maybe yeah, hovering like here. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit for the recall here for yeah. uh, for reset for Blabber too. And uh, Rich did a good job quickly dealing with the pushed in minion wave. He matches the teleport there for Fudge. So both top laners right back out to it. Um, and the Cassante, even though he getting pushed in a bit, d does not lose out on tempo. Well, one thing I'm noticing here about the difference in buys between those top laners, one bought a Ruby Crystal, the other bought a Sheen. Much more power there in the Sheen for Fudge, so I expect him to continue having a great time in that 1v1 as long as junglers don't get involved with it. Down in bottom lane, Tomo and Diamond still just chilling. A big story, I think, for Dignitas getting to start off here in Summer Split is having Tomo over Spawn because Spawn had a really rough spring, and you know the state of the meta as well as anybody does. It has been very AD carry focused for a very long time. Made it hard for Dig to be able to really find wins there, and their AD carry was struggling. Maybe Tobo can have a better shot at it here, getting to start with the team from the very beginning. But right now, Berserker and Sven have control over the lane. Yeah, Berserker and Sven have been doing a pretty good job here uh, with the chunks they've been getting, too. Something that Berserker was doing a couple seconds ago. You see him use his Infernum gun when he has a splash damage, splashing it off the range minions. Now they're going to go for the dive off that Sopana. They jump in. Tomo's got 100 HP. Blabber flashes in to get the first blood. Final turret shot's going to take him back as Diamond stays alive. 
Berserker and Zvan both very low on HP. Got to be careful about this one. But they... super, super worth it for them yeah. be because you're trading, even though you have to flash for it there for Blabber, double summoner spells down on Tomo, and Tomo doesn't get any of those minions with the built-up stacked minion wave that was pushed into the tower. So those small chunks we were talking about, Berserker getting onto Tomo, leaving their mark, softening them up, and allowing for that dive. Oh, Fudge really going in here. Oh. I said Fudge, don't do it. I said Fudge, you know what he does. I said Fudge. I mean, Fudge knew what he was, Fudge knew what he was doing. He wanted that kill, but Rich with the outplay there. Gets the ultimate off. He dodges away just out of distance, and the W goes onto the range minion under tower. Oof. Rich, th these are the things we've been hearing about for, for scrims where in the in the 1v1s, he's, he's had some spectacular performances. He outplays Fudge, but Cloud9 still, they're very happy with this play uh, because of the extra minions that do go uh, to waste here. If the Jinx is not farming them, very, very, very much worth it for them. And of course, the summoner spells will mean that it is a vulnerability here. So Fudge, with this big chunk, he gets on him, pops his ultimate, he wants to go for the ultimate plus into the W with the extra damage, but Rich, he ults him over, then dashes further away, and Fudge, with the auto onto the minion, yep. Oh, he, yep, he knows that one was an error. I, I'm glad he immediately just goes back to laughing at it, like, oh, come on, I knew that was gonna happen. Anyway, we already got the fight breaking out. MNS here on the front, level six, Annie being focused down, Diamond grabbing the kill. Dignitas get that one, but they lose Tomo in trade. It'll be a one for one with C9 having the better health and C9 getting themselves the Drake right after. Yeah, everybody's laughing, but uh, top lane, you know, that, that was a that was a solo death. It's okay, the team's got it under control. They yep. they they previously dove bottom. They're gonna get the objective still stacking, and it's looking quite good. 65 to 47 CS down on bottom side too, with Tomo currently in base and the minion wave getting pushed up to tower. You have to think Berserker probably gonna be able to get a turret plate on bottom as Jensen gets a turret plate in mid. Yeah, Berserker with the white gun. It's gonna be two here. That. White gun, so good. Crescendum is excellent at knocking down plates incredibly fast. Remember, for those of you who might not know the maximization, the attack speed is going to go up the closer you are to the turret because it has to bounce back to Aphelios. So whenever Berserker hugs that turret, stands real close, makes it incredibly easy to knock those plates down. Blabber may be looking for another angle down here. Right now, just checks through the red, seeing what might be up. Pathing back down towards this bottom lane tier one turret has the ultimate available. Berserker has Moonlight Vigil as well. Sven still no wild growth. That's something to keep in mind. Diamond and Tomo gonna be the focus here. Moonlight Vigil misses. Tomo eating a lot of damage already. He gets the kill on Sven. Dignitas punishes an overforced Cloud9 and comes out one for nothing. It's interesting because I was looking at the minimap the whole time and MNS was walking down, but he was still up by red buff when they forced that dive. So good outplay here from Dig, but Cloud9. They didn't wait around for their mid laner who was already roaming down. They paid the price. How about try number two? Well, the thing is, there's no ultimate here on the Annie. Blabber jumps in. Diamond wanted to make the play to cast the death sentence on Blabber to get him. He will ultimately take him down in a one for one trade, but it's two for one overall with Tomo Jensen. also dying. Jensen needs to come in here and try to clean somebody up. Berserker and MS, both at about half HP. MS nearly has Tibbers ready to go. Keep your eyes on that cooldown on the right side of the screen. Jensen still thinking about if he wants this or not. Berserker does not have a lot of mana to work with. Oh. Super Mega Death Rocket, but MNS with the stun to disengage. Yeah, I was close. If the if the charm and the Super Mega Death Rocket hit there, Amy pops pops ult, goes for the burst damage, even with the extra person around. But this, this game's getting a little wildflowers. Okay, yeah. nine getting kills, a, nine minutes. Uh, getting a little messy here. Dignitas keeping it very very competitive versus Cloud9 with all the scrappiness. And bottom lane were able to fight their way out of round one of it. And then the second part, they still get another counter kill onto the Kha'Zix. Here's a look at the original one. So even though the ultimate uh, or the ultimate from Berserker missing was a lot of damage, uh, but Sven right under tower, pretty easy pickings for them. And Blabber just calls it out, backs out, doesn't want to take any tower shots. But then MNS arrives and the minimap was kind of the, the key thing to look, look at there. Blabber prowling around topside now after having those two ganks in bottom lane. Wanted to see what he might be able to affect, but Rich's ward means that the bug is found out. Dustblade of Drakthar on him. Remember, this synergizes really well with Kha'Zix now because it's going to give you that extra damage, the execution on your abilities, which Kha'Zix already loves, plus the ability to become untargetable after assisting in a takedown is huge for getting in, getting a kill, and disengaging. Tomo, tag with a Moonlight Vigil. As soon as the stun hits, Tomo has to pop the cleanse to get away. 
Yeah, and you know, Ghostblade got uh, originally turbo buffed, but they quickly tapped it right back down and then re and then rebuffed up Drakkar at the same time. So they did that same thing where they're like, you know what? Everybody's spamming Ghostblade. It is super OP. And so they nerfed that one, but then they buffed this back up to give you something in return. And so a lot of those assassins are just swapping between the two. Yeah. Going everybody more towards the Dustblade now. If you can make use of, again, key part is it is ability damage. Um, pretty much everybody's happy with untarget ability, but yeah. <laughs> ability damage favors certain champions more than others, but Kha'Zix with those Qs, very, very scary stuff. Blabber's in a great spot right now. 3, 2, and 1. 100% kill participation on his team. Nobody else is above 2. Turns out this guy might just be the driver for early action on the cloud. I mean, he's squad. been driving down towards bottom lane a lot. <laughs> uh, and if they're forced to tower dive, somebody's going to die. Sometimes it's him, actually. A lot of the times it's him, but they're also getting a lot of kills there, too. So that is all of the action except for the 1v1 on top side, where we saw Fudge also with a taste for tower dives. So yep. Cloud9 liking their tower dives, but uh, not being as successful as they would want with them. Well, we've got a Drake spawning in 30 seconds. Remember that Cloud9 got the first one. Teleports are not available for anybody on the map except for MS. Rich actually just now using his to get back into the top lane. So if this is an on-spawn Drake, it means we're only going to have the guys who walk down to it part of the fight. You can see Dignitas clearing out some vision right now, looking to make something happen here. As all out, it's time for Rich to go all in. Fudge jumping back into the wave, seeing if there might be some outplay potential. Q3, one more auto attack gets it done, and Rich gets his second solo kill of the game. Blabber takes out Jensen back in the mid lane, and now Santorin has to head for the hills. And the hills look a lot like Rich. He's coming to back his buddy up, but it might be a problem. Eminez gets the kill on Santorin, and now Rich has to flash away just to survive. He won't even do it as Blabber picks up another and the 2v2 in bottom lane ain't gonna stop either. Diamond tries to get out. Berserker doesn't have the range to follow him up any further. Sven using the wild growth on himself means that there's no chance for Dignitas to get anything else back. It's a 7-6 game now with a 2k lead for C9. Yeah. Blabber and top lane both keeping this game bloody. I feel kind of bad for Rich because he had a really, really strong kind of tree of decision making there. He was on Iceborne Spike to just the components at the time of the 1v1 there with Fudge. So he forces after getting back with fully completed Iceborne uh, onto Fudge and he hit that Q3 as the Counter-Strike stuns him. So the Q3 still got out and he still got the knockback on it and he gets the solo kill onto Fudge with really good choice of timing to take the 1v1 due to the item spike, but then also execution in it. Uh, it's just that then when Cloud9 start winning uh, with their jungle mid through the mid lane and chasing up through the river, he cannot do anything. That's what I'm talking about, where he got he yeah. got stunned, but he still got his Q3 off. So as he's getting stunned, it does get the pullback onto Fudge. And you see the, the slow field on the ground. The Iceborne is completed. At that time, Fudge did not have his uh, Divine completed, so that was that one. Then, meanwhile, it was the mid-side play where Eminez holds his stun until Blabber gets there, and then you get the big surprise. Any stun into Kha'Zix, surprise from Brush, with his Dustblade already complete. He does so much damage right now. He's able to get the untarget ability off the kill on Santorin, and so Rich knows, ah, shoot, got to get out of there now, but he can't. And... It's Blabber rolling this one through with the Kha'Zix. The Snowball is working quite nicely. Double lethality items with the Umbral now complete too. The Vision Control will come. MS looking for Diamond, drops the Tibbers. It doesn't have a stun with it, but plenty of damage still from that AOE dot. MS with one more hit will take him down. Picks up the kill on Diamond for his second of the game as the Tier 1 turret will now be the target. Plates have already fallen, which means this thing is not long for the Rift. With that destruction, it's nearly a 4,000 gold lead for C9, shrinking back down closer to 3K now with Jensen picking up that turret back in mid. Jensen's Ari with the Everfrost now completed, has been struggling a little bit with the charms this game, so hopefully the Everfrost will help him set those up for more pick potential. He's been with a flash away there from the Nature's Grasp. Does not want to give away a free kill to Santorin and Dignitas. Jensen also teleporting in, really committing for this. The Glitterlance fires off, and as soon as they get the TP answer back from C9, Dignitas wants no more. All right, defensive teleport used here for the cover for MNS means that top side is a 2v1. So while Rich has been faring quite well, 1v1 versus Fudge, when Blabber enters the scene and you see the jungler is the same level as you as a top laner, 
you're definitely scared. Blabber with the 400 gold bounty on his head will be able to finish off that Rift Herald and get even richer. It is so nice now with the local gold being so high here for, for Rift Herald to get that isolated more money onto the jungler. And he is having so much fun right now with this big power spike. So we've got this engage on M&S, but it's only an engage from Diamond and Santora. Ooh. Nobody that does damage is anywhere Please. nearby. And that just means that now C9 can counterattack, pick up two for free. I know that they thought, sure, Jensen's nearby. He can roam up and help. But you got to remember, the enemy team has five guys, too. You got to <laughs> wonder where they are. Yeah, and Berserker looking pretty smooth with it there. Even sniped the ult at the end to get the, the trailing kill here. So now Cloud9 back on top again. Fudge joining with the rest of the squad as they have already gotten their, their kills down here. Just going to be the full reset. Berserker, though, that was quite smooth on the follow-up here. Uh, it looks like Cloud9 not going to sweat it too much. Four and a half, 4.7 now. Thousand gold is the lead. Still keeps on climbing in addition to the dragon stacking. And it was only a few hundred up until about 12 or 13 minutes. It really was that fight that Dignitas tried to engage in the mid lane on m &S. Jensen misses the charm. Blabber gets the counter kills. That whole sequence of events just turned everything into this massive explosion of momentum for C9. And Dignitas is now all aboard the struggle bus. Yep. And you're going to have a really big difficulty to stopping the continued plays from Cloud9. It's one of the best things about Annie is you can always force. m &S has done a really good job thus far uh, being there for the plays. A uh, little vertical jump here from Santorin. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, it is now at level 11 Annie with Flash and Proto Belt ready. So, so much mobility on the champ, plus the rank two for tippers. So that engage from Cloud9, you do not want to be within a screen here uh, of Annie plus any champion because there's so much damage on Cloud9. Everybody can follow up on him. And anyone who gets caught in that stun is going to be toast. So, all right, Kobe, what's the plan here for Dignitas? Because right now, it just seems like Cloud9 is running over the entire rift. They're going to be up over 5,000 now with this turret falling in top lane. Berserker picking that up. Blabber is just completely unassailable in almost any situation unless it's 5v1 and he has no ultimate. What do you do here for Dig? Well, they got to just huddle and try and play defensive until Cloud9 make another tower dive in. That's, okay. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Uh, throw under tower, maybe that happens. Otherwise, you're just trying to sweep out your own jungle is your only hope of like catching maybe a blab or face check or something like that. Uh, but you do need one of those things handed to you because if you're if you're in range of MS, look at that. He's so bold. He's going to proto belt under your tower at you with two people there to see if Tomo will flinch. He's just not concerned, man. He has no respect for the Jinx. And honestly, one, four, and three. Tomo not particularly super threatening at this point in the game. There's no reason for him to. 45 seconds until the next Drake spawns. C9 is already at a two to zero count in those. And I expect him to continue moving that forward. Yeah, I'd say Dignitas, you got to make the call. Go for top tower instead of this dragon. You get completely blasted at this dragon fight. So maybe try and get some gold anywhere you can. Good call here from Cloud9, though, of course. They're well, uh, very well aware <laughs> of the position that they are in with so much control. And so it's a, they send m &S to the top side to stop that possible play. And the reason that it's m &S up there is because he has the teleport ready. You can see that cooldown in the top right there. Fudge is still just a little bit off of having that unleashed teleport cooldown. So they want to make sure that if Dignitas does try to commit everybody to this dragon fight, make some sort of a Hail Mary play, they can immediately respond with their own man across the map. But right now, nobody else is required. Blabber's so far ahead. Kha'Zix is so good at killing these things with Q Evolve that he can just take the dragon out by himself. You can see with our perfect spectator vision, nobody from Dignitas even wants to go into the same quadrant of the map as this thing. So no challenge there. C9 move on to Soul Point. And that's uh, simple self-preservation flowers. Because uh, <laughs> it's uh, far too dangerous to go anywhere near those Cloud9 members for Dignitas. So those basic instincts kicking in, you know, stay safe. Yep. <laughs> and maybe, Always go with a buddy. maybe your opportunity will present itself. Santorin going in for that opportunity right okay. now. The nature's grasp fires out. They wanted to go for Fudge, but he can back away. Now m &S shows up. He flashes forward, and he just kills Tomo underneath the turret in the middle of the rest of Dig. He's got a stopwatch still, too. So that's why he's so bold there. Actually goes right back in. Still has his stopwatch on the Annie, even though he uses his flash to, to get that kill on the AD carry. Cloud9 still pushing, though, and 
with the W evolve here too from Blabber. He can also lend that extra support with the AOE. Man, oh man. I like that Dignitas at least went for something there. They saw maybe there's an angle to catch him underneath the turret, like you were saying, but they just don't have the damage. They're too far behind. Yeah, exactly. That Those are the opportunities that you are looking for, though. So I agree with you. Like that they you know, took their shot there. Centaurin trying to get him even further under the tower and hoping with the extra tower defense and damage, they might be able to do something. And Centaurin finds m &S. He's got no flash. He's toast. He should be down here. There's no world where he gets away. Where's the kill gonna go? Rich picking up the shutdown. m &S getting his second death this game. Okay, can they get the top tower objective bounty shutdown then too? You love to try and get full value and actually get objective bounty shutdowns out of these plays, but they want more kills. Blabber now being found by Santorin and Rich, but he can use the ulti to get back to his team. And now with Wild Grove and Fudge coming in from the side, they can re-engage. All out takes Fudge over the wall and brings Rich back to safety as Santorin and Diamond disengage off to the side. Fudge now finding himself alone still, but re disengages back to his team. You've still got Blabber back here fighting. He's trying to chop down the tree, but Diamond puts him on a leash. Blabber, however, is absolutely running wild, and Berserker takes down Rich. Tomo and Jensen want to get away, but that bug is hungry. He goes in for the damage. He gets a double kill. The turret shot's going to kill him through the dust blade. It's an absolute fiesta of a fight, but it's C9 partying hard when it's all said and done. Yeah, it's a bloody fiesta, Flowers, and I love it. <laughs> Cloud9 will be able to get the arrow. Uh, the Baron in the aftermath here. Love the the vitality. Uh, you know they're they're playing the game with uh, and and the bloodlust here, but it is a little bit too far. Dignitas. Cloud9 are just so fed right now, and they go on Blabber. He's got the spell shield, so he's able to get the Q into ultimate back over to his team. He chunks up, softens up two people, and Fudge sees the angle to try and go for it. But then Fudge. Very deep here off the ultimate from Rich. They try and finish him off. You called it out. He was able to kite back to his team. But in the left side of your screen there that we weren't following on live, Blabber does finish off his kill on the diamond and chase Santorin basically back to the fountain, only being at 200 HP, and then allows Blabber to come from behind the turret to make sure they can't escape. And even though he does go down to the tower, he gets one, and Berserker cleans the other one here with Jensen dying as well. And as you said with Blabber, when he goes in, somebody dies. A lot of the time, it's him. And there, it was him again. But the prize <laughs> is a fight where you get way more kills and the rest of your team gets the Baron even without you. C9 now gonna have that Baron for the next two minutes. Their soul spawns much faster than that, only a minute and a half away from now as Blabber can get away over the wall. Yeah, he's jungler higher level than everyone on the opponent team, Flowers. That, uh, Oof. that in this day and age, that is, that is a, a mega statement. Beat. Yeah, <laughs> if this was like season six, I'd be like, yeah, what else is new? Sky's blue. He's having but some fun though. <laughs> this is absolutely the Kha'Zix highlight game here for Blabber. Edge of Night, Umbral Glaive, Dusk Blade, Last Whisper also in the inventory for increased armor penetration against the tanky targets of Santorin and Rich. Teleport from m &S down into the bottom lane to join up with Berserker and Sven. Apply some three-man pressure here while Fudge splits back in mid and Blabber hovers between the two looking for opportunities. Yeah, he's hunting down here. Just passing through uh, through the vision, trying to keep the extra territory ready for dragon spawn. Because this will be the dragon soul, 29 seconds yep. on the clock, and Cloud9 slowly making use of their Baron buff here while they wait for it. Yeah, they just want to try to force down these tier twos if they can. Blabber jumping over the wall, finds a lot of burst onto Jensen, but cannot kill him off. Jensen disengaging back as Rich has gone all out. He's ready to fight, but it's Tomo killed off by Yemenes. Santora trying to take Berserker with them, but the shields, the reinforcement, the peel coming up from Sven. It'll finally not be enough, but now Jensen's stunned up. He goes golden, but man, it's just a trophy for C9 now. Everybody on Dig is dead and only cost Berserker. C9 up 12 and a half thousand gold. Three men left alive, four men left alive. I forgot about Fudge who wasn't even <laughs> down there. He's back in the mid lane. They don't even need the Drake. They can just push into the enemy base now, but recognizing that they likely can't end just yet, Blabber will be the one to fall back. He'll take the soul while everybody else takes the turrets. Yeah, this game's not about fudge. It's fine. You, you forget about him every once in a while. <laughs> Cloud Nine still pumping. Oh my goodness. This is looking like our defending champions, Flowers. This it truly is Cloud is. Nine time. They're going for Berserker here, though. Dignitas, eyes on the prize. Rich started out. He died. Santorin tries to follow it up. 
Diamond tries to follow it up. In the end, they do get their kill. They got Berserker, Avelios down. It is gonna cost them everything though. It's a Pyrrhic victory. They got it done. Everything else was lost in the process. It's now a 13,000 gold deficit. Dignitas does not have any realistic chance to win the game any further, but I wanna see what they might still be able to do here. I mean, damage <laughs> dealt in the last team Wait, fight. They forgot to put Fudge's damage. Yeah, Fudge, 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 Fudge rolled a donut, but that's <laughs> all right. The rest of the team, 10,000 between the three other carries there on the side of C9. As the combination of all five players on Dignitas, I'm not sure if it hit 5K or not. And that's just the difference in money, right? That fight starts with a 9, thousand gold lead it ends with a 12 or 13 thousand gold lead yeah. it's a bit of a mess yes sir all right cloud nine level 16 acquired for blabber juicy 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 evolves here for the, the bug with he has been the star of this entire game it has been fun cloud nine though the base is open in there look oh teleport behind for the flank okay they want to engage on c9 here rich is the man who's all alone Trying to use the unstoppable there. The Pathmaker, all out's gonna take him through the wall while on the back side of the fight. Blabber has gone in and found Tomo. Dignitas's plan has been completely routed and Berserker's gonna look for more money now. He shoots down Diamond and C9's already found both enemy bottom laners. Santorin and Jensen and Rich all having a retreat as Fudge goes in and he's looking to serve up dessert to Cassante. C9 trying to get this one done nice and clean and they don't even gotta try very hard. Jensen with another stopwatch, another Zonia's, another Stasis trying to keep himself alive here in his own fountain. But if that's your objective in League of Legends, you know the game's gone wrong and Blabber's gone wild. C9, 25 to nine, 27 minutes in, start off their summer split 2-0. Defending champs starting off pretty nicely here in summer. They got some uh, some new jerseys, some clean looks, and taking care of business. Our first game is just the warm-up flowers. Yeah, these guys, I mean, obviously, it was heavily expected for C9 to win this one, given the, given the estimated strength of both teams here. I was pretty impressed, to be quite honest, with the first 12 minutes from Dignitas, keeping it as close yeah. as they did. Yes, there was also some goofy stuff from C9, overforcing some of those dives. Bottom lane, like you talked about, MNS wasn't even there left. Even there yet, they just left it and said, all right, let's YOLO. But Dignitas was able to punish. Dignitas kept it close for a while. It's just, man, once Cloud9 found that one opening, game was gone. Yeah, I, and I specifically would call out Rich looking looking quite good, getting these kills onto Fudge. Yeah, the first one was Tower Dive, but uh, being able to outplay it there and maybe they'll be able to cook something up for top side. A lot of top laners can relate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing great up here. What's going on everywhere else? And you can uh, see. Looks pretty rough. We are going to finish this one out with that teleport though. Yep. The whole rest of the team is a little bit too far away. So he knows as soon as he arrives, Rich is running for the hills, but look at the bottom of your screen, Blabber the true assassin goes in towards the back, towards all of the rest of the members of Dig, and they just rip them apart. And that final level 16 evolution, the wings for the reset, gave him the confidence to just jump in, insta-pop the enemy carry, knew he could disengage, use the flash at the very end of it as well to avoid any sort of Everfrost lockdown. I mean, he's just, he's just so far ahead, man. I Again, I like yeah. the fact that Dignitas is saying, all right, Hail Mary, last shot, let's try to make a teleport play. We got Jinx yeah. with I no mean, we food knew that and Kha'Zix with the whole table. <laughs> we, we knew that was going to happen. We knew that game was ending one way. So uh, love taking your shot when your back is against the wall. Much better than hiding and waiting for it to happen. Well, hopefully Dignitas can get things together a little bit. Compressed schedule here in summer means your time to improve is much more limited than it normally would be. Six weeks compared to eight. So it's time to hit the VODs. It's time to see what's going wrong. Time to see what adjustments they can make. They still got another game to play tomorrow. Hopefully they can grab a win there to not end up with that 0-3 nightmare start that everybody wants to avoid. Mm -hmm. But they've definitely got a long road ahead of them here. They certainly do. Cloud9, meanwhile, looks like their road leading back to finals already. The, the, the yep. road looks pretty clear. They can kind of see the end with the pace that they've been setting. Well, with this one all wrapped up, we're going to go ahead and toss things to a break, but stick around. We got TSM versus FlyQuest coming up next.
Santorin going in for that opportunity right okay. now. And Nature's Grasp fires out. They wanted to go for Fudge, but he can back away. Now Eminem shows up. He flashes forward and he just kills Tomo underneath the turret in the middle of the rest of Dig. You've still got Blabber back here fighting. He's trying to chop down the tree, but Diamond puts him on a leash. Blabber, however, is absolutely running wild. And Berserker takes down Rich. Tomo and Jensen want to get away, but that bog is hungry. He goes in for the damage. He gets a double kill. The turret shot's going to kill him through the dust blade. It's an absolute fiesta of a fight, but it's C9 partying hard when it's all said and done.